Hey everyone, it's Lexi. So in today's video, I'll be doing my top five Kristen Hanna books. So when I did my review for The Four Winds, I mentioned maybe doing a video like this. And a lot of you guys really wanted that. So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna do that for you guys. So here are my top five Kristen Hanna books. I don't think I can pick a favorite out of here, I think, because I all love them in different ways so these are the ones that are definitely within like my top five and it was very hard to pick this because I feel like she writes so many great books so it was a little bit difficult but if I like at the end of the day these are the ones that I would say would be within my top five so I have more of in-depth reviews of some of her other books which I'll link down below in the description bar if I don't mention some of the ones that are also very popular of hers um, but yeah without further ado let's get started so starting up I'm gonna first First mentioned the book that really started it all for me and it is The Things We Do For Love which was the first book that ever hers that I've read and I got this book from Half Price Books and it's very old now it's turning all like the pages are turning all yellow but it is well loved but essentially what I really loved about this one was how connected I was to these characters and basically the premise of this story is it follows a woman who's just suffered a miscarriage and because of that her kind of marriage is crumbling so she ends up giving some time for herself moving to this new town and her paths cross with this teenager who's going through a difficult time as well and they end up you know kind of going off from there but I think like this one really kind of sparked the like feeling that I have with Kristen Hanna with how she's really able to really dial into the human experience and able to kind of write about different stories and just the kind of things everyone has to go through and I feel like especially her writing really focuses on female relationships and female protagonists and so this one really kind of did that job of like really like kind of really kind of thrust me it into her world and her writing and I was just so attached with this one I feel like this one isn't as popular as some of her other ones but like I said this is the one that is near and dear to my heart because it was the first book of hers that I read I think I was in grade 12 when I started reading her book so it was around 2011 2012 and since then I've been a very big fan next up would have to be the book that probably wrecked me the most at that time like this is the book first book I think I cried in it is Firefly Lane by Kristen Hanna. I remember reading this. I think I was going into university for the first time in my undergrad and I read this one. This was another one I got at Half Price Books and it's all orange pages now. But I like again, I think I haven't watched the Netflix show for this one, but I think like this one again really had the universal themes of female friendships and especially because we follow Kate and Tully through like three decades of their lives and the ups and downs of their friendship. I think that was something like everyone can find like whole pieces of that and having friendships at different stages in our lives I think that is very special and important and like this one I said destroyed me I think I was I don't know I just remember sobbing reading this and yeah this is where like I officially was just like a wreck after a book but I think that really speaks to her writing skills and how she's able to really connect you to the characters and their experience and what they're going through and you are just along for the ride and you're just totally engrossed in it so I think this one was the one where I was able to see a little bit of how she's able to connect you and kind of with the human experience and the things we do for love but this is the one that really hit home for me and yeah it's really good I still need to watch the Netflix series on it so I'm a little behind on that but yeah like I said this book broke me and I, the sequel is very good as well but this one is the one that made the top five so next up this is one that I read before it became very popular on like booktube and before it really kind of blew up and so I can I can really say that I was the OG because I read it right when I came out like an OG reader of this and it is obviously The Nightingale by Kristen Hanna. I think this is the book she is most well known for and I think it is for very obvious reasons. This one follows uh, two sisters who are growing up or who are living in Nazi occupied France and they each kind of have different kind of journeys that they experience. One is a housewife whose husband has gone off to war and she has to open her um, house to one of the Nazi officials and then we also have a sister who is a little bit rebellious and she kind of joins the resistant movement and it goes off from there and I think like this one I think really sparked the wave of female-centered historical fiction novels like I think like since this book this book like 
people and authors and publishers realized how important it was to kind of show the women's perspective of war because I feel like especially like the way you're kind of sh taught war in like taught about this war is like it's basically the men are doing this thing like they were the ones fighting the war they were the ones kind of losing their lives but no one really talks about the people that were also kind of suffering from home and having to do an internal war I think is very interesting and again this one I think I think I was reading this when I was at school it was sometime over like I remember reading this like the last part and just crying at school in between classes so yeah this one I think like I think this one really sparked a movement and really got Kristen Hanna's name kind of put on the map for fiction centered around women and I think it's unfair that this is like her works are classified as chick lit because of um, her stories just being about women but I think that's unfair a lot of these books have themes of survival and even though they have female protagonists and that focus on female friendships that doesn't mean it's chick lit like I think that's a very kind of double standard in just you know our world our misogynistic world but yeah I think this one like I said really kind of sparked the wave of kind of female centered historical fictions and I haven't read this since like I read it the first time and I think it just destroyed me so emotionally this is another one that is turning orange with age but um yeah this is another one that destroyed me and I think I need to go back and revisit it again because I was just like it was beautiful I loved it but it destroyed me Next up would have to be The Great Alone, and this is one that I think is very kind of different from her other books. The other ones, I feel like, where you were kind of just, they were thrust into worlds that we kind of were familiar with. We're familiar with like historical fiction books taking place in World War II. We're familiar with the kind of all-American kind of friendship stories growing up in America, like small town America. But this is one that I think is very different. Um, I think in this case where we follow a girl who's uh, growing up in the 70s and her father comes back from the Vietnam War and he's suffering from PTSD. So he decides that he and his family are gonna turn their life around when they move to Alaska and they're gonna get rich and all their problems are gonna be solved. Um, but that kind of just leads to amplifying his abuse and so not only is she kind of in a violent world within her house but also in the outside wilderness as well and what I think is very unique with this one in particular is that the Alaskan wilderness really feels like a character of itself like it was just totally atmospheric I could just picture myself in this world and what it looked like and just being you know having it sunny the whole time or being in darkness like I felt like the Alaskan like well, it is, as I said, was a character in and of, of itself, and that just added a new quality in here. And I think because this book focuses on such um, heavy subject matter, I think it's done in a, you know, very realistic and respectable manner where you can kind of understand being what it's like to be in, in involved in a domestic violence kind of, you know, dispute and kind of growing up in that environment. Um, I thought was very interesting and just how you see when this main character like, grows up you can see how she's when she's younger she doesn't really understand what's going on but as she gets older she kind of understands what her father is doing and I think this one is very hard hitting there's a lot of trigger warnings in this one but I think it is a necessary story for people who have gone through this and kind of seeing their experiences shared in very popular literature and done in a respectable manner I think is very you know powerful and lastly this is her newest one that has come out and again it has left me very much emotionally scarred and it is the four winds and this is follows a woman who um, ends up it's not very loved by her family she's kind of pushed aside and she was told that she was like would never be beautiful she would never be loved by anyone and so she ends up falling in love with the purse first person who actually gives her attention and they end up kind of having a little mistake together so she's kind of forced into this loveless marriage with him and so we kind of follow her and her family's kind of struggle with survival during the depression era specifically kind of within the, the dust bowl so we find we kind of follow her family struggling to keep her farm alive trying to struggling to keep their family alive when it is the you know 
drought of the century and all that so they end up kind of trying we follow them as they try to kind of improve their life and this one gave me so much anxiety like I honestly was just so stressed out throughout the whole thing because it, I was just waiting for something bad to happen like I was on my toes the entire time just waiting for this like I was so engrossed with these characters story that I was like feeling their dread like that's how in tuned I was to these characters and I think I also liked how this one in particular really focused on a hair on a, on an era of history that's very much glossed over I feel like in American schools like I feel like we don't really talk about like every like I feel especially at this time like there is like World War Two is kind of going on like or World War One is just kind of getting over and like all this other stuff so like I feel like there is so much more stuff that is like taught in class as opposed to this one as when we don't really focus on the story of people who had to live through this in America and I think this does a good job of shedding light on that kind of unspoken part of history like I said I was so in tuned with these characters and stressed out throughout the entire entire thing but I really loved this one in particular like I said there's very common themes of survival throughout all her books and this one is no different especially with the main character Elsa we kind of see her start to become you know brave and stand up for herself and really kind of we see that progression throughout you know the whole novel and again this one I cried a few times as well so yeah I think there's really something special about an author who can write so many different stories from like women who um, of all walks of life and find something that can really in connect the readers because it really focuses on just like I said the human experience that's it guys I hope you guys enjoyed this video let me know in the comments below what some of your favorite Kristen Hanna books are and all of that fun stuff so yeah thank you guys so much for watching don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and I will see you guys next time bye guys